Hey guys, welcome to the June update from my Will Simple Trade growth stock portfolio. You can see it's currently sitting at $43,700. It's up 40% in the last year. Over the past month, it's up about 10%, but if we just look at it, it's been trading relatively flat since February this year. In addition to that, I did make a fairly large deposit here of around $3,000, so you could say I'm still down from February right now. I'll be going through my entire portfolio, talk about three stocks I'm looking to buy, as well as cover other major news on other companies in my portfolio. And as I'm scrolling down, you can see the total value of how much I own from the company, how many shares I have, and the all-time returns. If you wanna get my updated buy and sell alerts on this account whenever I'm buying stocks, you can check out the Patreon link down below in the description, as well as if you want, you can see what I'm doing in my Quest Trade portfolio, which is significantly larger than this Well Simple Trade portfolio. That's all American stocks as well. So as we're scrolling down, we can see here, we've got Absolute Software and Acuity Ads. The first company I wanna talk about is Acuity Ads. They're currently sitting at $12.01. And actually today I bought about 10 shares for $12.08 per share. And if we look at the chart for Acuity Ads over the past three months, they've been on a decline in the past year. They peaked at around $32 per share. So the reason why I bought into Acuity Ads, I've been buying into the stock slowly over the past three months. We can see that they had a low price of $10.24. And recently they were up at $14.50 but then they dropped to about $12 per share right now. And the reason for this drop I saw is that Acuity Ads closed their offering as an IPO on the US Stock Exchange, where they closed $57.5 million. And the price per share is $10.15 USD. And if we do the conversion, we can see that roughly is around $12.38. Once they announced the price of $10.15, the stock sold off to about the IPO price. And this typically happens when companies have share offerings on the public market at a lower price than its current market value. The date that they announced this price was June 14th, which was actually yesterday, and we saw the stock decline. So you can see here on June 14th at 4 p.m. is trading at $13 per share, and instantly when the stock opened, it dropped all the way down to about $12 per share, matching roughly what the IPO price was on the U.S. Stock Exchange. Currently, I'm not in a huge rush to buy more of Acuity Ads. I'm going to be averaging in over the next couple of months, as I think this IPO and this new price that was set for shares that were offered is going to stay around for a little while. And right now I have 40 shares with a total value of $480 and currently I'm down $53 on this position. Going further down, I've got the Bitcoin ETF as well as Converge Technology Solutions and this is the next stock I'm gonna talk about. Converge is an IT solutions provider where companies contract out their IT needs to Converge. And Converge, I would say, is basically like the well health but of IT solutions where they're doing a lot of mergers and acquisitions. They made about 19 since they IPO'd. And right here you can see I own about 200 shares at a cost basis of $5.74. Over the past three months, the stock has risen from $5.23 all the way to $8.95 today. Looking at some of the news that they released recently, Converge achieves elite partner status with Pure Storage. So Converge partners with a bunch of IT solutions companies and they sell these companies solutions like peer storages. And when they get elite partner status, usually this means that they're doing high enough volumes and they get better margins when they're selling these people's products. We can also see here they achieve titanium partnership status with Intel Corporation. And if we go over to this article here, we can see that they've achieved diamond partner status with Palo Alto Networks. Um, and again, titanium partner status with Intel. They also had a recent acquisition of a Silicon Valley's based IT solutions provider, Dasher Technologies. And on top of that, they raised $172.5 million just earlier this month. The analyst featured in this article here is saying that he has a buy rating of $11 per share. At the time of this article, this represents a 36% upside and that's about right based on today's prices as well. The analyst used a 10.1 times the 2022 adjusted EBITDA to come to this number, so he didn't just pull this out of his butt. He also says this is a conservative estimate because it's a discount compared to regional VRA and IT solutions providers, and they're trading around 11.6 to 12.6 times adjusted EBITDA in 2022. So the analyst is comparing Converge Technology Solutions and using a conservative estimate against their competitors. And still the stock he's saying is undervalued and it should be more like $11 conservatively. 
The one danger I have with buying into a stock that's risen so much is that people who bought in around the $5 level, which occurred for a good four months, they have a lot of incentive to sell right now because they're up around 30, 40, or even 50% like I am. So you maybe run the risk of some short-term headwinds, but I think over the long term, maybe in 12 months or even two years, I believe that the company, if they continue to operate, they will continue to increase the share price and eventually return capital to shareholders. Going further into the portfolio, you can see I hold the Chable still and I hold DCM or Data Communications Management Corp. And this is the next stock we're gonna talk about. And this stock I'm looking to actually buy more of. If we click into it, I have 1,750 shares. I'm up 68.59% and my average price is 71 cents per share. And you might be sitting there asking, why are you buying into a stock that you're already up 68.59%? Aren't you scared that it might come back down? Well, the way that I look at Data Communication Management Corporation is that the stock is still undervalued based on their financials and what they're putting up in terms of numbers. Going over here, they only have a market cap of $53 million. The average traded volume is 84,000 shares. So basically $80,000 flows in and out of this company. That's a very small percentage. So that's a huge risk you're taking if you're gonna play with this company like I am. However, I've done my research. I have high conviction over the next year or even three years that this company is significantly undervalued. And I'll show you why. Over here on their balance sheet, they have total current assets of $71 million and total current liabilities of $60 million. So that's a net of $11 million. If you look at the total assets of $154 million, that's greater than the total liabilities of $142 million. One thing that I wanna highlight here on the balance sheet before moving on is the fact that their net receivables have been going down quarterly. And this is a good sign because they're converting more of their um, debits from customers into actual cash. If we look at their cash position though, the cash position is going down. So the next question you must ask is where is this money collected from net receivables going to? And that's going to paying off their long-term debt. You can see that they're aggressively paying off their long-term debt. Within the span of a single year, they reduced that by 50%. Their accounts payables are also going down. So part of the cash that they got from the net receivables is going towards accounts payables as well as going towards the long-term debt. Now jumping over the cash flow statement, this is another thing that I want to highlight here. This company is generating a good amount of cash. In 2020 alone, they generated $46 million. Remember, the company is only worth $53 million today. So they generated net cash of $46 million and from operations alone, $47 million. So this is not including investing activities or financing. In the trailing 12 months, they've increased that to $55 million. So this company is pulling in the same amount of cash as their market cap. And I think this is why it makes it ridiculously cheap. Because when you're buying a business, you really just care about how much cash is coming into the bank. So the fact that the company is earning its market cap in cash, as a shareholder in the business, basically you can invest $53 million and expect by next year, you're gonna have $53 million back in the bank. And the year after that, that's just like gravy on top. And this is how I see DCM right now as a super undervalued play and why I'm willing to add more to the stock, even though it's gone up recently. The five-year chart doesn't look great, but let's look at the one-year chart. It started out at 19 or 18 cents a year ago, and today it's $1.24. And still, based on my analysis that I showed you today, it's cheap. The next stock I have an update for is Dyan Durham. And Dyan Durham received an offer to be bought out for $3.4 billion Canadian. And that's a premium on top of what the shares were trading for when the offer was made. Basically, the shares are worth $50.50 if the acquisition goes through. And Dyan Durham currently is sitting at $48.72, so below the acquisition price. The reason why I'm still holding on, and I believe that the acquisition will close, there's still some upside to the stock because if the acquisition closes, then as a shareholder, I'll receive $50.50, which is basically a $2 upside on this position per share. Right now, why it's not trading at $50.50 is probably shareholders find there's a risk in this acquisition that it may not go through. And it's actually management plus some other financial institutions that are looking to buy this company and take it off the market. 
If you're a shareholder in Dyn Durham and don't want to risk having this deal go under, the shares will probably drop if management decides to withdraw their offer. It'll go back down to about $43, maybe $42 per share. So if you don't want to take that risk and wait for it to go to $50.50, then now's a good time to cash out. Scrolling further into the portfolio, I'll let you guys just kind of pause the video here if you want to see these positions. The next stock that I want to highlight is Real Matters. So Real Matters, I've been buying this company, but recently haven't bought too much because its position has grown fairly large. It's worth $3,200. I'm still down 8%, but I do believe it presents a great buying opportunity. So Real Matters is the third stock that I'm looking to continue to add to this portfolio. And the reason why I believe this company is undervalued, looking at their financials or just at their market cap first, it's $1.4 billion. Financially, we can see that on the balance sheet, they have $129 million in actual cash. They have $161 million in current assets. They basically have no debt. None of these items are actual debt items, just like accounts payable, accrued liabilities, etc. but they don't owe anyone. So if we take this 161 and subtract it from the current market cap, this effectively gives them an enterprise value of $1.2 billion or so. Now going further into their financial statements, the cash flow statement is what I'm looking at next. They are a cash flow positive company. They generated around $60 million in cash, $72 million in 2020, but the trailing 12 months dropped about $60 million. This is still no small feat. So they're generating quite a bit of cash. The company is also, the company also has a P ratio of 35, so they are profitable. And if we look at this chart of this company, the company has sold off from $32 all the way down to $17 per share. And when that happened, management started to buy back shares around the $20 mark or $25 mark. But recently they've been buying aggressively. And I'll show you over here on SETI.ca how much they've been buying back. So these are all the share repurchases that I'm scrolling through since January 1st. So they bought back around 5,000 shares on average pretty much every single day since January. And that number continued to go up in February to about 10,000. And you can see it's been fairly steady. In March, they increased it to about 12,000 shares. And you can see the prices that they're buying at $15. Earlier it was 18, 16, 17, even 19 at the beginning of this year. I'm scrolling further down to April, about $16 per share. They're slowly increasing it to 14 and then bam, Right here at the end of April, they increased it to 165,000 shares and they're buying them at $17.24. Looking at Real Matters right now, they're at $17.47. So you're buying shares if you're buying today at the same price the company is buying back at. They did buy at 15, 16 when the stock continued to drop. And they continue to buy hundreds of thousands of shares basically every single day. On one occasion, they bought 603,000 shares and they are continuing to buy that all the way up till yesterday. So you can see here that they filed yesterday, they bought 146,000 shares. Another thing to note for Real Matters is the fact that they're continuing to buy back shares through 2021 and that normal course issuer bid was renewed on June 11th. So literally four days ago. They may purchase up to 4 million common shares, which represents about 5.2% of the outstanding shares. We can see that they have a daily purchase limit of around 153,000 shares. So they're pretty close to that right now at 146. And the company is doing this because they believe at the times, the prevailing share price for its common shares do not reflect its underlying value. So by purchasing and canceling these shares, it actually provides more value to shareholders in the long run. Because effectively, your single share that you own is now worth a higher percentage of the actual company because they're canceling out shares. So this is how they're returning capital back to shareholders. And I think this might actually be better than dividend payments because by them canceling out shares, there are no tax implications on your part. But if they pay dividends out to you, you're being taxed about 38% for that dividend. And if you get capital gains tax, that works out roughly to be about maybe like 10 to 20%, depending on your income. So tax wise, it's better for them to actually buy back shares than to pay out dividends because on the gains that you get from dividends, you're paying about 38% tax. And on capital gains, you're only paying around 10 to 20%. So this is the end of my portfolio. And these are all the stocks that I own in my $43,000 portfolio. And just within the past, 
half an hour of filming this, it's gone up by $100. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you have any questions about the positions that I own. I'll be happy to answer those in the comment section down below. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to keep up to date with my monthly updates. And as well, check out my Patreon group if you're interested in those buy and sell alerts for Canadian stocks and American stocks in my Clutch Trade account. I'll throw up two videos on the screen. If you're interested, you can check them out. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, keep up the grind and have a great day. Oh,